tragedy struck the Cowboys on Wednesday as they lost one of their most beloved players in franchise history. Landon and I will dive in on this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am Marcus Mosher. Check me out on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Follow him at McCoolBCB. Landon, we've got some really depressing news from Cowboys Nation on Wednesday. Marion Barber passed away at the age of 38. How are you doing today, sir? You know, it's tough. I mean, we we get close to learning these players. You know, we 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 kind of learn their personalities a little bit. And, you know, at a certain point <laughs> for some of us, uh, you know, when you reach a point where you start becoming older than these players, yeah. right. Yeah. And, 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 and you see their experience through uh, kind of your experience, your life experience. And, you know, Marion Barber is four, was four years younger than I was, you know, five years actually. Um, and just to watch someone so young uh, pass away, it's just heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. And, uh, we're going to talk about it and, and, you know, we definitely want to spend more time kind of celebrating the career yes. more than anything yeah. else. Cause we think that that's the best way to honor a guy like this. Uh, but on a personal note, um, I'll just say that, you know, I, I think watching somebody who put so much effort and passion and, um, just, you know, uh, uh, uh putting him, putting the team in front of his own, <laughs> Uh, physical <laughs> well-being. What oh, you know, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe to the point where you know we could talk about what kind of contributions that may have happened to his post-career life. But I think that you you watch a guy like that, and then um, you juxtapose that to that moment that I think a lot of people are bringing up in in um, in uh, the the real the well like the the hbo series that the cowboys the, the, hard the cowboys knocks. were a yeah. part of hard knocks could not remember hard knocks life of me where that that scene where you know there the, it shows some cowboys players partying and having a good time and then it kind of pans away to to marion by himself you know very lovely piano soloing mm-hmm. uh, alone in his in his apartment and it just kind of shows you the sort of depth of personality the, this guy this guy was and what kind of person he was and, and i think that, that that's something that i really uh, uh you know attached to so to see him kind of struggle in, in his post career and then to yeah. see him kind of pass away so early it's just it's really sad so I, i'm excited to talk about the happier stuff yeah and i i want to talk we're going to talk about our favorite games moments and all that kind of stuff in a little bit because he was an awesome player but i think we should start start with the teammate part of it honestly first because i think he's one of the most beloved teammates and players that the Cowboys have had in a long time. I was talking with somebody earlier today about like approval ratings for players. And like, I think Marion Barber of the last decade or two decades might've had the highest approval rating of any Cowboy. Like I just, I, I can't think of a player that was as universally loved as well yeah. as Marion Barber. And I think that's why, I mean, obviously when somebody passes away so young, it's tough, but especially when it's somebody like Marion Barber, it makes it even harder. He was one of the I was thinking about it, you know, uh, he was one of the only guys and I, I'm trying I, and maybe you could think of somebody else. He was one of the only guys that the media like specifically, you know, didn't push on trying to interview, you yeah. know, like I can't think of another star player who played for the Cowboys who wasn't kind of forced into media obligations uh, the way that Marion Barber was somehow a- a- able to avoid that. And I think that was kind of a respect for what a quiet, you know, personable yeah. guy he was, conscientious guy he was. I mean, the the the, the personality that we saw on the field, uh, you know, seemed to be at times kind of in direct conflict with who he was or what we saw from him off the field. Uh, yeah. I, I think, you know, people talked about it like, you know, Marshawn Lynch and, 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 and the impact he had, I, I think that Mary Barber was Marshawn Lynch before Marshawn Lynch was, you know, yeah. just that type of just 
infinitely passionate player. I mean, honestly, if we're going to like, and we can start talking about his on-field stuff, but to me, obviously the, the play that defines him more than anything is that four yard run he had against new England. Uh, in uh, when the Cowboys were backed up on their own, I think five yep. or 10 yard line, he must've run 35 yards and broke eight tackles on that play just to get four, just to not get a safety and yeah. not, you know, and to pick up four yards. And I think that kind of shows you the just unbelievable raw determination that this guy had when he played. And it was just, it was incredibly impressive to watch. And I think that is why you have such universal love for him, right? Is because his effort and his passion for the game was, I mean, you could see it on the field. Oh, was, yeah. He, se- every, every, he played every snap like it was going to be the last that he played in the NFL. And, it, I mean, he was an incredible, incredible player for the Cowboys during his peak. And I, I can't wait to talk uh, more about some of our favorite memories from him. Because I have quite a few. I, I think like from 2005 to 2008, the Cowboys had so many fun games. Yeah. And he was a big part of a lot of those games and a lot of those wins. And I want to talk about them. Uh, we should mention just we, we don't know what happened we we got a report yesterday afternoon that uh the police found him dead in his apartment no, nothing else has come out since then um we do know uh des bryant actually last summer kind of informed everybody on twitter that marion wasn't doing particularly well and he was in a tough spot and that you should reach out to him and he was pleading with the players association to help out marion barber uh I don't know what happened there, but it seems like this is still something that we we have a lot to learn about. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the all we know is based on news reports, and you know, I don't want, we don't want to get into we don't want to speculate. Yeah, yeah. So, but it, it you know the, the reports didn't sound great, and and obviously yeah. Des Bryant's uh, uh you know call for for getting him some help obviously didn't bode well as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, not to go too far down that road, but I, I do hope that if there are any lessons to take away from this, uh, from the NFLPA's point of view or from uh, uh, concussions or whatever, uh, that I hope that everyone takes the opportunity to uh, kind of take the time to examine Marion's situation yeah. and hopefully we can all learn. And, and reach out before it's too late, right? I, yeah. I did see that Des today said on Twitter uh, that he was meeting with the Players Association this morning to try to help former players that might be in a tough spot or try to get them the help that they need. So if anything good can come from this, I hope it's something like that, where the Players Association can kind of identify and find players that, that need help and get them the help that they deserve. So um, it's it's never easy to, to do a transition to, uh, to an ad rate, but we've we got to do one anyway. So just tell you guys about Blue Nile. Uh, whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating mile, a milestone moment, find Julie as unique as her. With the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Lockdown Cowboys listeners will get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement. So use promo code LOCKDOWN. That is promo code LOCKDOWN. Plus, every order is insured. It ships free and it arrives in a discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. All right, let's uh, let's talk about some of the best moments for Marion Barber's career because there was a lot of them. Uh, there, there's a couple games that stick in the mind me, with for me when I think about Marion Barber. But I'm curious for you, what's your favorite moment of Barber's career? I mean, you know, look, I mean, if individual moments like like I said, that that run against New England not only stands out as a moment. Um, uh, you know, in, in his history, but in Cowboys history for me, just like, because it's such a incredible individual effort. Um, you know, I, I think back to like some of his bigger games that he's had, like, uh, you know, he, he it, it's funny because like, as the, as his career kind of went on, like, you know, he still kind of would pop up and have a huge, a big game here and there. I, I think about, the the uh, the big game against Philly, I think in two thousand nine, that was late where we won, they won twenty or sorry, it may have been two thousand ten, I can't remember, I, but I think it was near the it was near the end of the seasons where the Cowboys were winning big and he had a big game and he was just he just ran all over them, um, you know there there was 
a game against I think Arizona where he had like a really huge game. He um, had a really long touchdown football. in that game, like an 89 yard touchdown. Yeah, that was I mean, it was an incredible play. I I wish we could show video on this podcast because it's one of my favorite barber plays by itself. Yeah, and and I mean again, like it's just it, all, all it is like it's for me, it's not like individual moments that stand out. It's it's like the style of play he played. I mean, I just remember it being like he was one of those guys who he didn't have great speed. I mean, obviously we all know that. Like he wasn't breaking away from any button, but but it almost was to the detriment of the defense because if you caught up with him, you're going to get basically punched in the face. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's, it's like getting, catching up and trying to tackle Marion Barber was just like, and and that's the thing he would come up to you and he would just either push you off. I I, I try to remember, I think it was, uh, was it Arizona that they played that one time where he, it was like a little seven or eight yard run and he had kind of reversed field and gotten back up the sideline. And, and I think it was, um, I think it was a safety that came up to him and tried to, t- to, to tackle him. And he was right on the sideline and he got like up on him and Barber just literally pushed him onto the sideline, pushed him off the field and then just kept on going for another two or three yards. I mean, just that. And like the way he, I mean, the thing that really kind of stood out to me about his play was that guys would get on him and he would do whatever it took to get them off. He would headbutt mm-hmm. them. He would push them off. He would, I mean, I mean, punch them. Like that was that was the thing you saw him at, at a certain point before they kind of, you know, reeled him in a little bit. He would be running and he'd see a defender approach him and he'd just throw a punch at him. Oh right? yeah, I mean, yeah. So I, I just I, I think about, you know, it's with some players you think about incredible individual moments that like are, uh, uh, you know, like that are historically significant to the team or uh you know individual milestones like that for me it's just his hair you know flashing out of the back of his helmet his violent movements i mean every every part about his movement was violent you know his upper and lower body the the trucking folks the, Mm -hmm. the the, the, the running and then picking his feet up to like you know to clear all the guys that are at his feet to keep going uh, all of that. I, I just think about all those, you know, and then all the short yardage, all the touchdowns, oh, yeah. all the like, all the one of the best short yardage yard running backs of all time, without a doubt. And and I mean, if, well, if you needed a yard, he was getting you two. You know, it, it's just he was so good at, like I said, just using his will to overpower folks. That you know, I mean, he wasn't an incredible athlete. No, he you wasn't. Know? I mean, he no. was he was a he was a good athlete who was very strong and just he wanted it more than you did. And it, and it, and it showed on a regular basis. Uh, I, I got two games that I specifically remember I, vividly that I, I want to point out. But uh, the first one was from a 2006 game when Bill Parcells was the coach. Uh, this is one of the games that made me think Parcells fell in love with Marion Barber. And I don't know if you saw the statement from Parcells this morning, yeah, but he almost said perfect player. Something he was like almost that, a perfect yeah. player. Um, and I, I, when I, I bet you, I almost guarantee you when you think of when Parcells thinks of Marion Barber, he thinks of this game 2006 against the Falcons on Saturday night football. Um, it was, this was a, a good Falcons team. This was a really close game. The Cowboys got the ball up by three with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. Okay. And I remember Parcells called this the Barber game. Barber touched the ball on, I'm looking at it now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight plays and scored a touchdown with two minutes left in the game. So nine minutes to two minutes, and now you're up by 10 points. It sealed the game, right? And that was the special thing about Barber is he was so good in the fourth quarter. And if you look at those runs, 11 yards, 8 yards, 4 yards, 12 yards, no yards, 3 yards, 19 yards. It's just he was so good at closing games. I, I don't know if we've seen a running back like that before where you could say, hey, okay, game's on you. We're going to give the ball eight straight times. Go make a play. And he did. Uh, the other one was another game in 2006. This was a little bit earlier in the season. They played the Bears on Sunday Night Football. And uh, yeah, th- yeah, this was, that game. I or remember. sorry, this is 2007. 2007. And, the uh, Bears the, game, though. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Bears were coming off uh, – being in the Super Bowl the year before that, fantastic mm-hmm. defense, and Barber ran through them on Sunday Night Football. And I remember it was John Madden who was doing the yeah. game, and he said, 
This is one of the best running backs in the NFL. Who He didn't even start for the Cowboys at this time, and John Madden was praising him. You probably remember the play of him running over Adam Archuleta uh, near mm-hmm. the goal line. I think mm-hmm. that was one of the times, like, holy cow, this guy is different. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, just – and he did that regularly to guys who were like legitimate pro bowlers. I mean, I, I was trying to remember who the safety was that uh, I think it was Adrian Hamilton that I was talking about that, that uh, Barber had pushed off. I mean, and again, like even like if you go back to that new England run, that we talked about that was a new England defense that had all kinds of like 2007 Patri- or so, yeah, like, 2007 all, Patriots yeah. that they're going against and, the undefeated team. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, you know, going back and watching like, you know, all his his highlights and and, and best runs and stuff. It was, you know, oftentimes against extremely, extremely talented, extremely good football players. And he is just sunning them, you know, just like in treating them like little brothers, you know, and um, it's it it, it really is impressive to kind of, uh, uh, you know, watch him carry the football when he was on. Um, I, I, I think about like all the, uh, the great rivalry games, you know, and all, all the, the NFC East games he, he played in, um, you know, I just think that, and, 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 you know, it's funny because I mean, you talked about starter, like how many games did he actually start? I mean, technically start, like, I don't know. in, In the first three years of his career, he started three games. Um, yeah. During that time he scored 33 touchdowns. (laughs) <laughs> I it's think ridiculous. that's uh, pretty good for not being a starter i guess yeah uh, you know and that's that's what he was like he was just kind of this unstoppable force near the goal line and near near the first down markers um you know he just and like i think you know he didn't even have uh, I, I should look this up but I, I think he had less than 10 100 yard games in his career like he didn't have a ton of like huge production like in that way uh, for like yardage uh but again like his touches were so valuable the number of touchdowns yeah. that he had Not, like nine career games of 100 rushing yards or more but that wasn't really his role his, no, his but role that wasn't, wasn't his to role. get 25 carries in a game right he he just I, didn't do that very often in fact he only had nine games in his career with 20 or more carries it's just the cowboys didn't ask him to be that and that's you know that's what's nuts about him right is that it's like he's just such a unique kind of character in the NFL where he was such an important part of that offense uh, for, for the, for five, six years. And he, you know, wasn't necessarily the full full full-time fixture. Wasn't necessarily on the field all the time, Mm -hmm. uh, but was, was one of the team's biggest stars and one of the team's most loved players. Uh, And and that's something that, that started immediately. I mean, I remember, the push to to like get him on the field. Like, Hey, he needs, we need more time with this guy. Uh, And, and then, you know, just kind of, you said it, like we have a, I mean, we have a a fandom of, you know, often very fickle fans, if we're being (laughs) honest with ourselves. I mean, there's a love hate relationship with the vast majority. The more popular the player is on the Cowboys, usually the more that there is also a, a counterbalancing uh, hate for that player. Like the same, the, you know, the, the amount of people that love Dak, there is a huge amount of people. Oh, that yeah. Don't like yeah. Dak. The, the same with Romo, same with Tio, same with Cooper, same with everybody. That's a, a big player in this team. I don't know that there was such a out of balance in the, in a good way, a uh, 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 feeling about Barber. Barber was just so universally respected and loved because of the way he played. Uh, and so he's just such he he was just such a unique uh, 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 fixture in, in Cowboys football because he wasn't, you know, this full time superstar that like a lot of the other guys that have same recognition name recognition that he does. Uh, but he still was so well loved throughout Cowboys fandom and, and, you know, just makes this even more heartbreaking, I guess, to talk about. Yeah, I, it really is. I want to talk a little bit more about Barber's career and how he kind of got to where he did with the Cowboys. But before we do that, I'll tell you guys about Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local auto parts store to stock up on all the parts that you need. Rock Auto has everything from engine control modules and brake parts, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whether it's for your, your classic or your daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. 
Go to rockauto.com right now to see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in the How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. Barber came in with the Cowboys during a really weird era. because it, So in 2004, uh, Parcells was the coach. They drafted Julius Jones in the second round. A lot of people were still really bummed out that they didn't get Steven Jackson in the first round. Bill Parcells yeah. wanted Kevin Jones, I believe, uh, in the second round. They dr- drafted Julius Jones, who had a really nice rookie season. Like Julius Jones was good as a rookie. Yeah. And then the Cowboys take another running back in the fourth round the following year, Marion Barber. And then a couple of years later, they draft two running backs early in Felix Jones and Deshard Choice. And he outproduces all of them. So despite having this kind of rare talent on the team, it seemed like they were always trying to replace him. And yet he's a guy that, you know, lasted through the Parcells era, lasted through the Wade Phillips era, and was there when Jason Garrett was the coach. It's, it's kind of incredible for him that he lasted as long as he did. He's the one that got a big contract from the Cowboys. Um, it, it's just amazing how much he, he had to fight through to, to get playing time and to, to get recognition in the NFL. Well, he's a guy who came from a football family. You know, I mean, his dad played uh, professional football for the Jets, maybe around the time that I was born. I think it was like early 80s. Uh, he, his brother is, I mean, his cousin, I think, is, is Peyton Barber, who is still, you know, active. Uh, and then, you know, he had two other players, Thomas Barber, who had a little bit of a career and I mm-hmm. think another brother who also played as well. So, uh, you know, so he comes from a family of, of, of football players. He understood what it took to, you know, kind of be part of the grind. And I think that's ultimately what got his uh, Parcells attention early is kind of his demeanor, his his approach. He had a very professional approach from the beginning. Uh, and I think that that's something that, that you know, that transferred over with him from Minnesota when he was drafted. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I just think that, you know, you mentioned it, they, they, the Cowboys did all this you know investment in, in the running back position and, to, and they did all of that. And then the guy that with the least, you know, pedigree, that's the, the least amount of pedigree is the one who ultimately kind of rose to the top there. Well, and you um, know, it's also funny. You look back at like his college career, and even then, like he didn't he even split he time. Was, in yeah, because yeah. he was spilling time with Lawrence Maroney, who got yeah. drafted by the, the Patriots in the first round. And then Gary Russell, who started for the Steelers for a while. Like even in college, he had to fight like crazy to get snaps. And I think, I mean, I think he just developed that mindset early in his career. Like, yeah. hey, every snap that they give me, I promise you, I'm going to give you everything I have. Yeah, and and if I remember correctly, Mulroney was too was a was a highly recruited player, and so yeah. it was a very similar situation for Marion in Minnesota, where he was the the lesser of the two recruited players, and he had to work extra hard to split that mm-hmm. time with with a high with was highly recruited guy. So, uh, yeah, Barber obviously had no qualms with uh, working hard to get the the playing time that he felt like he deserved and ultimately earned. We talked a lot about Barber's running ability, but one thing that we didn't talk about a lot that he might be even more famous for around the league oh, was man. his ability in pass pro. Yeah, uh, John Gruden uh, on the last hard knocks that the Raiders were on, he was showing a video of his young running backs, Josh Jacobs and a couple of the other guys there, how to pass protect. And he was using video from 2006 of Marion Barber and pass pro. And I actually just watched the hard knocks from 2008 uh, where Barber, they had a little clip in that where Barber just jacked up Brady James on a blitz, just one-on-one, just completely knocked the air right out of him. And and that's just the type of player that Barber was. If he wasn't going to make an impact play as a runner, he was going to do it in pass pro, or if he was going to do it in the receiving game. He really was everything you wanted in a running back despite not having great athleticism or great size. Yeah, and Brady James, for those who don't remember, was a very large linebacker. Like he was, he, he knocked wasn't, him out. Basically, I mean, it was, yeah. go. It's on YouTube. Go watch it. It's incredible. And, and and that's you know, it's funny because like honestly, when Zeke came into the league and and you saw what he could do, that's immediately who I got you know yeah. the impression of. And they they deal with it the same way where they just stand right up and th- deliver the blow like they're tackling you almost. You know. Uh, they they relish that that aspect of the game, which is, he c- clearly shows, you know, especially with with uh, Marion Barber. He loved the contact and he loved to be the enforcer of the contact. And I think, you know, it showed in his running style. And it certainly showed in his pass protection. Yeah. Well, we're going to miss Marion Barber. Thoughts and prayers to his his family and his loved ones and all the teammates. 
know this is a, a really, really hard time for everybody, but uh, we're going to miss him a lot. He was such a universally liked player. Um, and uh, listen, I, I'm going to call him a cowboy legend because we all be all. Yeah, absolutely. That much, yeah. So. Uh, all right, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow uh, to do some Cowboys OTA notes. Um, we'll be we'll talk about receivers a little bit later in the week. So make sure you guys are tuning in, downloading the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow the show at Locked On Cowboys. You can follow Landon at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. We'll see you guys next time.